Well, we always save the best for last. You know, the one sport that I closely can uh, kind of just get a feel for because I do it so much. I wanted to make sure I'm chatting with the Cougars on a big note, and that's why I'm bringing in my friend Amy Siegel, the head coach of the a track and field and cross country team coach. And coach, I know this this quarantine has kind of messed me up a little bit. You know, I was up to running like you know 15, 20, 30 miles for my whole life, uh, but I stopped <laughs> because of the, the quarantine. So, uh, how have you been doing uh, during? Well, at Everett, you know, I'll say no sport is better to do during the quarantine than running. What a, what a perfect activity. Uh, so I, I yeah. encourage you to get, point, get back to it. You can come run with me any day. <laughs> That's a good point. How have you been doing? Doing well, doing well. Um, you know, obviously things are a lot different, um, but it, that is true. Running is, is the one thing that I feel is a, is a great escape where you can get out of the house and uh, see some people running down the road and waving and uh, – so um, I'm hanging in there, and, and the team is hanging in there as well. So I know, Coach, you were uh, in the midst of the, the kind of the spring season, and I believe it was like the day before you were supposed to head up to Coastal Carolina uh, for a meet. Uh, what was that like when you got the news and had to break the unfortunate news uh, to your teams? That's right. So um, we were scheduled to compete at Coastal Carolina on Friday, and we got the news on Thursday, I believe. Um, and, you know, we saw things happening and we really were hopeful that we could at least get that meat off. But um, understandably, the, the safe thing to do was was not to travel. So we were fortunate enough to have the opportunity where the team was still all on campus. And we sat them down in the hospitality suite and um, had, had a conversation with them. At that point, we didn't really know how long this would go on. And, um, you know, wasn't, wasn't expecting the length of time that it did last. Um, so at, at that point, we talked a little bit uh, with our seniors and had the, you know, the, the entire team there with the seniors, um, but just was so unknown, it was hard to know what to do. You know, we were just trying to be there for each other. And you talking about that, you know, of course, we are talking about uh, running. And I, a lot of people would probably think, well, you know, the virus, if you're running, you're in constant motion and um, really not around a lot of people. So you would think, though, the one sport that definitely would be safe and best for social distancing would be uh, cross country. But as we know, Coach, uh, at that point, uh, with just so many uncertainties, uh, you have to just play it close to the best. And it's always better to be safe uh, than sorry. Certainly. And, you know, I mean, that meet um, that we were headed to is known to have teams from all over the country coming down for spring break and, you know, definitely didn't want to expose anybody or, or ourselves, um, you know, have risk exposure for any of the student athletes being around people and, and taking it back. And uh, so I, I think definitely was the best decision and, and the smartest decision. But uh, nonetheless, it was it, it was heartbreaking not to be able to to get get a meet in, um, let alone finish the season because we had such an indoor, such a great indoor season and just, just wanted to, wanted to keep it rolling. You know, coach, when you think about a runner or a track and field athlete, especially let's just kind of focus maybe on the cross country, because again, you coach both of the teams, but for cross country, when it comes to uh, recruiting, mm -hmm. just simply who can run the fastest, is there a technique? Like what are some of the things you look for when you're going out looking for a uh, future College of Charleston uh, cross country runners? Yes. So, um, you know, definitely performance obviously comes into play, but what I'm looking for is I, I want the right person. And my coaching staff and I agree on that. I mean, there's times where you can look at the, the, maybe the athlete that's thrown the farthest or run the fastest, but if they're not willing to put the work in, uh, that's what's going to separate them at the college level. So we're always trying to develop those relationships with our recruits and find the right fit for us here at the College of Charleston. I mean, I think it takes a special person um, to, to make that commitment at the Division One level where especially, you know, we're up very early in the morning, 6 a.m. with the, the distance runners and the, the throwers have practice at 7. Um, and it, it, it takes somebody who can be committed and uh, not get distracted and really focus on their goals and focus on helping each other as teammates to get better. So we're always trying to dig in and, and find that by talking to their coaches and just getting to know more about them and their family, definitely. You know, Amy, when you talk about track and field and also you know, cross country, I'm sure a lot of Cougar fans uh, don't even know where you guys practice, where you perform, where you have your meet, so forth and so on. Kind of let us shed a little light in terms of uh, where you guys obviously uh, do your performing 
and just the fact that if maybe some Cougar fans wanted to come out one day and, and kind of watch uh, just what you guys do, how they would go about doing that. So that, that is a good question. Um, as you know, I've been here at the college for 17 years, and um, we're, we're still working on finding our own home for a track facility. The, the city of Charleston is a wonderful place, but there's not a lot of land to build a track. So uh, what my, my assistants and I, my, my staff and I, talk a lot about is just the fact that the city is our oyster. We're going to make the best use of, of the city of Charleston and the surrounding areas that we can. So currently we have an arrangement set up with Charleston Southern where we do our track practices over there. Um, our throwers practice there every day. Our, our jumpers and sprinters are there every day. The distance runners are usually once or twice a week on the track and then the rest of the time we're using various parks throughout the city and Mount Pleasant. Um, Lots of, you know, Francis Marion Forest. We've got so many different places in Charleston. So that's one of the positives is uh, Charleston's a great, great city to live in and a great city to train in. Lots of options. When we look at the actual, I'm just going to say running program, which will encompass uh, obviously the track and field as well as cross country. How many student athletes, Amy, do you manage? Because I would imagine that's, that's the equivalent of a of a football team at, at a different school, uh, the number of, of student athletes that are under your watch. So for, for next year, we've got 39 females on the roster and then we have 11 males. So, um, you know, good, good number. Um, and uh, our, our numbers have increased due to the fact that my staff has done such a great job recruiting and we found some good people to join us for, for next year. We're excited about. Now, what does a track meet look like, Amy? You know, I think a lot of people's track and field uh, awareness is maybe at the Olympics, because you don't see a lot of track and field events, you know, really uh, on television these days or uh, able to attend. So is it similar to like the Olympics where you got, you know, multiple things going on at one time? Kind of give us a, a behind the curtains look at a, just a normal track meet. Yes, definitely. So, you know, the TV coverage of, of track and field tends to focus on some of the the more glamorous events, maybe the, the 100 meter dash or um, the mile race. Um, but, you know, obviously all events in track and field are important. So um, as you go to a track meet, you're going to have a, a time schedule all throughout the day where you're doing lots of different activities. So often, uh, you know, we'll start with throws in the morning, some distance running in the morning and, you know, four by one. It's going to be a, it, it's kind of like a three ring circus in a lot of ways. You've you got many things to look at, lots of activity, and you got to focus in on, on what it is, what event that you're looking for. And, you know, I've got assistants that are, you know, if they're coaching the, the, the sprinters and the jumpers sometimes they're in two places at once trying to coach um and then if we've got an event you know an athlete who who goes who's a thrower who also sprints it's going to be uh, lots of different activities and and for them it's high excitement and you you got to figure out your schedule and make sure that you're in the right place at the right time so it's really being focused on where you need to be and uh making sure your warm-ups are taken care of with the right amount of time and then you have to keep track of the schedule on the track and then if anything falls behind schedule and the, and the throws and events as well so it's always just being aware and being alert as a track and field athlete coach this could be a stupid question and lord knows i've asked a lot of them in my lifetime um do you train practice uh get ready for indoor season differently than what you would do for outdoor season or is it basically the same this one is under a roof and the other one is no no that's that is a really good question there are some differences um clearly being in south carolina for us uh we don't need to go to an indoor facility to train so we can do all of our training outside but the major difference is if you're looking at events like the the high jump or pole vault um you know as you you're inside you don't have to worry at all about the wind or the elements once you go outside um, having a, a headwind or a tailwind is going to make a big difference um, in, in pole vaults. I mean, even in, in hurdling and in sprints, there's times where you have to change the direction that you're running so that you, you don't have too much of a, a um, tailwind. And so, you know, there's a differences that way in terms of the throws. You got to sometimes change how you're, you're throwing things if you're going into the wind and, and make use of it. Um, so there are going to be some element differences um indoor is a little bit easier and outdoor obviously you can you know rain or snow or just depending where you are you, you got to deal with it and really a, a track meet does not end just because it's raining if it's lightning 
it will be delayed, but we carry on and kind of like the U S postal service, you know, <laughs> you just Hail, deliver in right? all conditions. So that's right. That's right. <laughs> all right. So I can envision you have 39 females and 11 males. That's uh, about 50 people. So I imagine a zoom call for a track and field and, uh, obviously cross country. That's a lot of people on the call. How have your uh, conversations with the team been uh, during the coronavirus? Yes, so so we did a couple of, of Zoom calls with the entire group, but other than that, we tried to break it down into event groups just to make it a little more meaningful. Um, I, I felt when I was doing the group with the entire, you know, the entire team, it was me just trying to go individually and, and ask one question and we didn't get a lot covered. So. Um, you know, my staff and I have just been breaking it down based on, okay, this is the event group. Let's, let's sit and talk about something meaningful. How are we going to, um, you know, a, a lot of things is just organizational. A lot is checking in to see how everybody's doing with, with classes and exams. Um, some of it is just trying to gather ideas for next year. What can we do better? What, um, you know, what went well? So I, I feel that the, the smaller group conversations have been better that way. And just, really giving them an outlet to, to communicate with one another and have an informal agenda. Just let them talk and joke around as if they were at practice. So. Well, Jenna, you're obviously uh, always proud of your uh, team on the track, uh, in the classroom, but I know also your team was awarded a, a very special community award, giving back to the community. I know that's always so important and really an uh, initiative that, you know, Matt Roberts really wants to, uh, you know, come see us and, and see the Cougars giving back. Uh, talk about the team award that your team got this past year uh, for really helping out a, a pretty special organization. Yes. So um, Andrew from Engaging Creative Minds had contacted me. He, Andrew McGoughlin was a um, former employee at the College of Charleston in the athletic department, good friend. Um, and he had reached out because they were in need of course monitors for the Charleston Marathon. And um, kind of last minute, they, they lost some of the folks that, that were going to help them. So we jumped right in. It, it was a very early morning call um, in terms of report time. We had to be there by 515, I believe, um, to get on the bus to disperse us to where we were headed. But the team really did an outstanding job. And it, it was a, a fun day for sure, just keeping the, the runners on track, um, making sure that they didn't get lost, making sure that no one had any medical issues and really just being there to encourage them. And it, it was fun. I just myself being out there, um, watching the whole scene of these runners run by. And it's something that we do all the time. We do this every day in terms of our sport, but seeing other people get the gratification of, of, seeing themselves be successful and complete a race like that. You know, a marathon is no daunting task. And so there were times we would just jokingly banter with them and kind of yell some encouraging words. And, and they were pretty funny with some of their responses coming back. Um, but I think the team really gained a lot from that and, and felt as if, uh, you know, giving back to our sport and, and helping others um, do something to make themselves better. Uh, it makes us better as well. So I, I was very proud of, of how the team had responded. And, um, you know, I know for a college student, waking up early on a Saturday morning is not always the easiest thing to do, but uh, I, I was very proud of them. And to be awarded the Volunteers of the Year through Engaging Creative Minds, um, which is the organization that puts on that race, um, that, that was something I was very proud of. Now, Amy, as you and your staff, as you get ready for the upcoming uh, season, who are some of the, I guess, key personnel that you're kind of really uh, counting on to be leaders? And it's just really a, a different time, a unique time. Of course, no one's ever experienced anything of this nature. The, the off season, I would imagine, uh, has to be very disciplined and dedicated to get your runs in and, and stretch properly or whatever, you know, the student athletes have to do. Who are some of the, the student athletes that you're really relying on to kind of be that, that coach uh, out in the field? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great question because we lose some very strong leaders in our seniors, but I do think we have a great crew coming in to, to really lead us. Um, and on the, the track side, one of the people that stands out to me is Anna Smith. 
Um, she was a, a freshman this year who did an outstanding job. Um, she's a pole vaulter, and she just has a great voice that, that motivates the group. Um, she and Chloe Christian is also another pole vaulter. Um, obviously, Lucy Liger did an outstanding job for us setting the school record, um, but they, they're a few who stick out in my mind. Um, Jordan Dean on the sprint side, um, she's a, a very strong voice for just the positivity of, of bringing the team together to do more than just compete. She really is a big voice for volunteering and she has a heart for that and trying to get the team together to, to establish other goals and, and um, you know, figure out what else we can do off the field. Um, and then on the, the distance side um, and also the throwers, I mean, boy, I think that we had such a, we had a smaller throws group um, this year and, I think they came together real well and um, they will help the underclassmen as, as the freshmen are coming in. But, you know, I think about um, Kimbra Owens did a great job for us and uh, Brooklyn Barton and Haley, Haley was a, um, she, she's a freshman who will be a sophomore next year. And um, she didn't have an opportunity to compete in the javelin, but she's a very strong voice that connects the team together. And then on the, on the distance side, um, Kate Ambrose and uh, Jack Wedge are, are two strong forces, along with Tyler Fish. So, I mean, so many people, we have such a large roster, and it's hard to, you know, everybody in their own way plays a role. But uh, there, there's several who stand out in, in our minds as our, our leaders for next year. It's pretty just exciting. And, you know, as, as I listen to you uh, talk, what really kind of resonates with me is just that it really, you have to really be, all student athletes obviously work hard and, and they go the extra mile. Um, but for, for your teams, though, it, it sounds like a lot of – there is no babysitting. Um, you, you have to get up at five. You have, you have to run. Um, you, you know your distance. Obviously, you can't be with everybody and even during meets. So, it sounds mm -hmm. like uh, – and I see what you're saying now with just that type of self-starter, uh, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> motivated person is what makes uh, the best Cougar track athletes. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yeah, we, we've got a great crew and uh, I, I couldn't be more excited about the group that we've got. All right. Now coming up next year, coach, uh, I know you mentioned you guys kind of train all over the, the low country. Uh, are there track meets at Charleston Southern that you participate in that we could go see or kind of let us know if there would be an opportunity to see you somewhere here? Uh, in the low country. In, in yes, the no, that, that's a great question. And so next year, we plan to keep things pretty, pretty local, um, just because we're not sure what this virus is going to entail. So we've been at University of South Carolina, we were at that meet, um, three of four indoor meets were up there. So you could probably uh, count on us being there several more times again next year. Um, Charleston Southern has a cross country meet, and then they also host an outdoor track and field meet. So we would plan to be there. Coastal Carolina has a meet. Um, and next year, we're very fortunate in that our championship for cross country is at UNC Wilmington. And so that's not that far down the road. They're going to host a pre-conference meet as well as the conference meet. And we plan to be both at, at both of those, obviously. So That would be obviously awesome. I know Cougar Nation would love to, uh, you know, just come out and support. And that's the one thing, uh, no matter what the sport is, uh, Cougar Nation usually can, can show up and, like you said, Coach, sometimes when you're on that last leg and you're tired, you need that last kick, uh, just somebody there, you know, kind of giving you that encouragement can, you know, go a long way. So uh, so now, Coach, that I told you that I hadn't really been running over the last 12 weeks, we know what I've not been doing. What have you been doing? What have I <laughs> How many miles have you ran, Coach, uh, during the last three no, that's that's a good question. So, you know, I, I was slowly increasing my mileage right before uh, the pandemic had hit where the, the team, I'll go out for practice with them. And, um, you know, I try not to run right with them twofold, um, one of which is they don't tend to talk about as much when I'm there. I like them to be a little more relaxed. Secondly, um, I'm not sure I can keep up with them the entire time. So I, I just let them do their own thing. You know what I mean? Um, but no, I've been, I've been running and getting some ab workouts in. I've got three little girls. So we have a good little routine where we, we've been riding a bike quite a bit over at Colonial Lake and, um, just trying to, trying to stay busy. It's, it's active. I've got three under eight. So, uh, as you can mm. imagine, got, got yeah. my people. The three are now, are they leaning towards cross country or will we see them in the 100 yard sprint? 
Well, I, I definitely have one distance runner, probably one shot putter, and I think one gymnast who any opportunity she has to hang upside down, she will. <laughs> that sounds good. I got to ask you because, well, we've asked all the other coaches, uh, how's your yard looking, coach? Uh, everybody else has been working on their yard. Now, you little girls, so you sound like you got a lot of help that could, you know. Yeah, I got, you know, fortunately, my husband was smart, and uh, he put just rocks in the backyard, so we don't have any grass to have to mow, so we're, we're pretty lucky. <laughs> well, that is awesome. That's uh, that's good to hear. We, we kind of kid with all the other coaches that we're going to tell Matt Roberts to have each coach send in a picture of their yard, so we can uh, – both on the yard of the athletic. Nice. Oh, nice. nice. We have a very small patch of grass in the front, and it, it's immaculately manicured. You know, it looks it's great. It's just all about the angles, Coach. You just got to make it look like it's more than it really is. So That's right. Uh, but no, that's outstanding, Coach. And I, I've always been a, a, a fan of yours and your team. Obviously, I think a lot of it is just jealousy because those, those kids just run and run and I, mean, I often think about running, Coach. It just never <laughs> happens to put foot to, to pavement. So, uh, but like I said, my, my wife has kind of taken it up. So I kind of run vicariously through her. You know, I, I buy the, the, those really expensive, that's maybe that's why I don't run coach. I just thought about it. Those, those shoes, um, I think they're called hookahs or something that. Oh, you know, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Those things, um, are like a mortgage payment and <laughs> us and my family can afford, uh, the running shoes. So that's why I'll be the gentleman. I'll defer. Well, you know, I, I would be happy to come knock on your door at 530 in the morning and teach you some barefoot running techniques. We could work well, on that. Well, you know, Coach, back in the late in the early, early life, back with the Kenyans, when they used to run like the, the Cooper River Bridge run, I always used to joke and say I would run barefoot to give everybody else a chance. So, but I just... I don't, you don't want to make everybody jealous. I know. You, it, yeah, it's you know, you're 40, you 45 up, so. now, Coach, you know, quarantine snacks and the metabolism. Mm -hmm. This isn't quite what it used to be, so we're just going to just stay on this side. Uh, I will comment on those running uh, cross country and just, you know, giving them two thumbs up and, you know, the shot putters and the discus throws. Like, I'll be very encouraging. It would be embarrassing if you beat everybody, so we'll just, we'll give you a pass. That's there you go. See, I like the way you think, Amy. Amy, thank you so much for uh, joining us on Chatting with the Cougars. Well, thanks for the time, Everett. We appreciate it. And uh, thank, thank you, Cougar Nation, for being out here. And uh, we, we appreciate you. And, and the athletes appreciate you. And uh, we're, we're here if anybody needs anything. There you go. That's Amy Siegel, the uh, head coach of the track and field and cross country teams uh, at the College of Charleston. And of course, if you want more information on uh, Amy's program, you can always log on to CFC Sports. Dot com that csdsports.com and click on either track and field or uh, cross country. So uh, Cougar Nation, I hope you guys enjoy catching up with all of our fabulous coaches uh, at the athletic department. It's been a crazy spring, uh, crazy summer, and hopefully uh, in the fall, I can start in August, September, everyone will be back. Uh, Amy will have the kids back out, you know, preparing for the track and field season. Jason Kepner will have the volleyball team going and everyone will be back on campus and are looking forward to an outstanding 2020-2021 uh, uh, athletic season. So uh, thank you all for watching all of our chatting with the Cougars. Uh, thank you again, Amy Siegel, our guest for today. And uh, thanks, and we'll see you next time on Chatting with the Cougars. Thanks so much, Everett. Take care.